y equals mx plus b is slope-intercept form, right? Today we're going to do a different form, but it's still the equation of a line, okay? You still get a line out of what we're doing. Okay, we put that away. Um, so point-slope form looks a little bit different. When we were doing uh, slope-intercept form, we had a slope and we had a y-intercept, right? This is what you need to do when you don't have the y-intercept. Okay, so when you get the equation of a line without having the y-intercept, you're going to do point-slope form. Um, and basically what that means is when you are given m, or m represents your slope, right? When you're given a slope and some point, so we'll call it x1, y1, because it's going to be a different point every time. So when you're given slope and a point, then you can put it into point-slope form, because you have those two things, a point and a slope, okay? Yeah? Um, so this is what it looks like, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and what you need to make sure of is when you put something into this form, that you replace this number, this number, and this number, okay? So you will put um, numbers in those places. The m is your slope, you're gonna plug the slope in there. And then the y1 and the x1 is the point that's given to you, okay? So notice that they're flip-flopped, right? The y comes first and the x second, when normally we're used to seeing the x first and the y second. That's definitely a place where it can get a little bit confusing at times. Okay, so here's what it's gonna say. A line passes through the point negative three, six, and has a slope of negative five, what is an equation of the line in point slope form? So we have all this information, right? The, the point slope form. You're going to plug the negative three six and the negative five into it. So what you need to do is specify what is what. So the negative three would be which variable? That's your x, okay? So this is gonna be your x one. The 6 would be what? The y1. And what variable would the negative 5 be? The m. Okay? So you're just going to take that, and you're going to drop it right into that formula. y minus what? 6, your y1, equals the slope, which is negative 5. And then it's x minus what? minus negative three, and be careful there as well. Um, point slope form always looks opposite of what you think it should be. So it's y minus six, but notice up here six was positive. And then it equals negative five times x minus a negative is plus a positive three. But notice up here, the x was a negative three. So in the formula, because we're subtracting, it always looks opposite of what it is, okay? Got some catching up to do. Um, questions on that? So this would be your answer. You just leave it like that. You leave it in point slope form. Okay? All right, let's try the next one then. Actually, you try the next one. Try to write this information in point slope form. Y plus five equals one-half x plus two. Good job. Okay, so listen, your start should have been y minus a negative five equals one-half times x minus a negative two, right? But we make those plus a positive, plus a positive. Um, so it ends up looking like this. But again, notice it was a negative two. In the formula, it's plus two because it's the opposite. Okay, um, so it's always going to look backwards, which means when you get to this next type of problem, um, you need to use that idea, okay? The formula says it's y minus your y1. So what is your y value? It's not negative one. It's positive one, right? It's always opposite of what it looks like. We're subtracting a positive one, okay? Um, what's your x value? Uh, 
Um, two. A positive two, okay? So that means the point in this problem is two, one. So it's confusing for two reasons. It's confusing because your x's and y's are in the wrong place, right? The y comes first and then the x. So you have to switch them this way and you have to switch the sign. If it's a positive up here, it would be a negative down here. If it's so a negative up here, change, right? yeah, it's not that we're actually changing it. It's just that the formula uses subtraction, and subtraction does the opposite, right? If we say it's the opposite of something, we subtract it. So it's like one, y plus one is like that? Like if it was y plus one, then your point would be negative one, right? So it, it will appear opposite every time. Okay, what's the slope of this one? Um, two, thirds. two thirds, good. Okay, so when they say to graph this, you have a point and you have a slope. Which one should you plot first? The point first, okay? So you're gonna plot the point and then you're gonna move from that point the amount of the slope. So where is two, one? Two what direction? Two, two to the right, one up, right? So here's the point, two, one. And then from there, that's where you want to do your slope. So my slope is 2 thirds, which means I'm going up 2 to the right 3. So up 2, 1, 2, 3 to the right is going to give me a point right there. And that's your line. You just draw that in. Okay. Um, I'm going to have you try another one. On the, just on that same graph is fine. Let's say your equation is this y plus 3 equals negative 2 times x minus 4. You need a point, and you need a slope, and then you need to graph it on that grid above. Try that. OK, so let's talk. What did you get for your point? Negative 3. The other way, 4, negative 3, right? Positive 4, because remember, this is x minus your x1 value. x always comes first when we name a point, x, y, okay? So positive 4, and then what about your y value? Negative 3. Okay, so go ahead and plot that. 4, negative 3 would be right here, okay? What's m? Negative 2. Negative 2. Where do you move for a slope of negative 2? Down two over one. So if you want to write it like this just to remember to move to the right, you can. Or you can write it like this. It doesn't, I don't care which one of those you give me. Okay? Um, but make sure from here then you're going down two to the right one and put that point in so it looks like this. Okay? Questions on that? Yeah, Zion. Right, because the formula says y minus your y1 value equals m times x minus your x1 value. So if I plug in a negative number, so it's y minus, and then my y1 value is negative 4, let's say. When I do that, if I simplify, minus a negative is actually plus a positive. So it's a negative 4, but it looks like y plus 4 now because we were subtracting a negative number. Okay? Yeah, so it will always look opposite of what it actually is because we're subtracting it. Um, okay. I know for those of you that have the hard copy, I didn't remember to print in color. Um, so like up here it says the blue line and the red line. The blue line is this one, right? The red line is this one. So you might just want to like write on your hard copy red and blue by those lines so you know which one is which. Um, so we're just going to look at the blue line for now. And you're given two points on each line. So the point one, four, if you want to put a point there just so you can see it, that's fine. Um, and then the point negative two, negative three, my line didn't quite land exactly where I wanted it to. But um, So we have those two points, okay? We're going to put those 
that line into point slope form. So in order to do point slope form, you need a point. Hannah, put that away. Hannah, put it away and take your earbuds out and pay attention. I know you did this already, but it doesn't mean you don't have to pay attention now. Um, so if this is the setup, okay, you have to find a slope. You have to find a point. Here's the beautiful thing about it. You can pick whichever point you want. So there's two points. You pick one. I usually try to pick the one that doesn't have the negatives, but maybe you like the negatives. So you pick the one that has the negatives. That's totally up to you. Um, how do we find the slope if we know two points? Okay, so you can count it on these, or you can put it into what formula? How about this one? Okay, so you can do that or you can count it. I'll do one of each. The blue line, I'm going to plug into that formula. The red line, we'll just count it off, okay, just to show you that both work. Um, so if this is going to be my x1, y1, and my x2, y2 to find the slope, I would go negative 3 minus 4, right, y2 minus y1, and then negative 2 minus 1 and simplify. So this is going to be negative 7 over negative 3. What is negative 7 over negative 3? Um, 7 over 3, right? Um, and you can just leave it as that. That doesn't reduce, so just call it 7 over 3. So my slope of the blue line is 7 thirds, okay? Then it says pick a point. So you may pick whichever one you want. I like 1, 4. I like to be positive. No need to be negative, right? Um, and then put it into point slope form. So you have your point, you have your slope. Now we're going to plug it in. So it would be y what? Minus what? Four. Yep, y minus 4 equals 7 thirds times x one. minus 1. Okay, and you're done. That's the equation of the line. So you find a point, you find a slope, and then you drop them in. Okay, let's try it with the red line. So if you look at the red line, um, they give you the point negative 2, 1, that's right here, and the point 2, negative 3, that's right here. Um, if you want to just count the slope, you would have to go rise over run. So from left to right, we would go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4. So down 4 over 4 is what number? Negative 1. Okay, so your slope is negative 1. And then it says pick a point. Which point do you like? Two, two negative three. Um, so two, negative three. And then we're going to put it into point slope form. So it's going to be y what? Plus one. Oh, no, wait. Wait, plus three. Plus, plus what? Three. three, right. It's y minus a negative three, which is going to be plus a positive three, right? So it's y plus three. Oops, oops, oops. That's not what I want. Sorry. Okay, so it's y plus 3 equals one. the slope, negative 1, times x minus 2. Okay, let me show you what happens if you pick the other point. Okay, if we were to pick negative 2, 1 instead, it would look like this. Y minus 1 equals negative 1 times X plus 2. Both of those are correct, and it doesn't matter which one you give me because if you turn them into slope-intercept, they'll look identical, but they don't look identical right now. I promise you they are, okay? Um, so you can pick whichever point you want. Okay, last thing for this lesson. What's the slope of this line? Negative 1. If there's that negative out in front with no number attached to it, the slope of that line is negative 1. So technically, on this last one, we could have written it y plus 3 equals negative parentheses x minus 2. Okay? Questions on that? Okay. We're 14 minutes in. Do you need a stretch break or do you want me? I have this much left. Do it. Keep it. Keep moving. Anyone like need to stop for a little bit? I can stop for a little bit. Okay. Then we will keep going. Um, <clears throat> so 5, 4, B, we're just 
keeping on with point slope form. Now it kind of takes it up a notch, okay? So now, before they gave you a point and they gave you a slope, or you could find the slope just by counting it off, right? Now they're just gonna give you two points. They're not gonna give you a slope and you're not gonna be able to count it off in a graph, okay? Um, so if you have two points, but you wanna put it into point slope, you may use either one of those two points, but you also have to find the slope. How do you find slope? There it is, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? So you're gonna take these two points, call one x1, y1, one x2, y2, and plug it into that formula. So if I take those points and plug it into this, what's it gonna look like? What minus what? Three minus one. Three minus one over Right, five minus a negative four is really gonna be five plus a positive four. So we have three minus one is two, five plus four is nine. Can you reduce two over nine? No. Nope, so you're gonna leave it like that. So that is your slope, okay? Two ninths is your slope. Then you pick a point. Which point do you like better? Okay, so if you pick negative 4, 1, you may do the other one if you want. I'll show you both of them. Um, but if you pick negative 4, 1, then what is point slope form going to look like? Y minus 1 equals 2 ninths, parentheses, plus 4. Minus a negative 4 is going to become plus a positive 4. Okay. If you like the other point better, your equation would be y minus 3 equals 2 ninths times x minus 5. Either one is fine. They're both correct. Okay. Questions on that? Okay, you do this one. Letter B. Work that out. Find the slope. Pick a point and put it into... All right, let's take a look. So for the slope... Yeah. We'll have it to 8. What happened to 8? 2a, I have it. Oh, you just have to reduce. Right? right? If 2 over 8 becomes 1 over 4. Yeah, don't do a decimal. Leave it as a fraction. Because think about if you have to graph it, to move 0.25 up and over 1 is harder than to move up 1 over 4. Right? So don't, it, it's not wrong as a decimal, but it's really hard to graph as a decimal. So leave it as a fraction. Um, okay, so if we're going to plug this into the slope formula, we're going to go negative 1 minus 1 over negative 2 minus 6, which is a negative 2 over a negative 8. Don't forget to ditch the negatives, right? A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and then reduce. So it's a positive 1 fourth. Um, so your slope, God bless, is 1 over 4. Um, and then pick a point. It looks like everyone up here picked 6-1. Um, so I'm going to pick the other one just so that you see both answers because that answer is correct. Okay? Um, so if I pick the point negative 2, negative 1, then it would be y minus a negative 1. So y plus 1 equals 1 fourth times x minus a negative 2, so plus 2. So you could have that, or if you picked the other one, y minus 1 equals 1 fourth times x minus 6. Okay? Questions on that? Okay, um, this one. They ask us to transform an equation into slope-intercept form. And you told me before what a slope-intercept form look like. y equals mx plus b. So here's what you need to remember when they ask you to do this. Solve for y. Your job is to get y by itself. And if you get y by itself, then the slope-intercept form pretty much takes care of itself. Okay? Um, what would we do first to get y by itself here? What's a good first step? Y minus 1 plus 3. We are eventually going to do plus 3, but there's something you should do before that just to simplify. Right, we're going to distribute, right? So distribute this, so you get y minus 3 
equals 2x plus 2. And don't forget to distribute to both parts of your binomial there, okay? Um, now, how do you get y by itself? Plus 3. So we're going to add 3 here, and we're going to add 3 here, and we get y equals 2x plus 5, and that looks just like that, right? Slope-intercept form. Okay, so you need to distribute first. Um, if you want to make a, a little list here, distribute first, and then second, you'll isolate y. Okay, get y by itself. And we'll do that again on this next one too. But I just wanted a trial run before we add a bunch of numbers in with it. Okay, um, last thing, and this is for sure the most involved. It's more of a real world problem. Um, and it has a few confusing aspects to it. If it doesn't make sense, ask me, okay? Um, but we'll talk through it, walk through it together here. So it says, when using a table, so here's our table, okay? Um, the table shows the altitude of a hot air balloon during its linear descent. Linear meaning what? Straight line, right? So if a hot air balloon is starting here and is doing a linear descent, it's not going to like drop and then float for a while and then drop and then float for a while, right? That, that's more of a stair, that's not a linear descent. What it's saying is, here's the hot air balloon, the wind's blowing, and it's going down. So it's going to go down in a straight line, okay? Um, so we're doing a linear descent, which means we should be able to write the equation of the line that it's going down in. First thing you need to do is you need to find the slope of that line. And because it's linear, you don't need to do it with all of these points. You just pick two, okay? Um, I typically just pick the first two, but you don't have to. You may pick any two points and do the slope formula. Now, think about what is my x values here? Time or altitude? The time is your x's, right? Left side is always our x's. Right side is always our y's. So we would call the 10 x1 and the 640 x2, and then the 30 we'll call x2, and the 590, oh goodness, I wrote that wrong. <laughs> ignore me. Don't listen to me. Try that again. Um, don't really ignore me, though. Um, x1, this is y1, x2, and y2. Okay, and what I just messed up on is the place that a lot of people mess up, so pay attention that your x's are x's and your y's are y's, okay? I called it x2 instead of y1. OK, so if we're going to plug this into the slope formula, it's going to be y2, so 590, minus what? 640, y1, over what? 30 minus 10. OK, so if you subtract that, 590 minus 640 is negative 50 over, what's 30 minus 10? 20. Okay. Um, so negative 50 over 20, if we just do a little reducing, if we divide both of those by 10, it's negative 5 over 2. So you can write your slope as negative 5 over 2. Or in a real-world situation, it's not a terrible idea to make it a decimal, um, just for the sake of understanding what it means. So either one of these is fine, okay? Negative 5 over 2 or negative 2.5. Um, and then you're going to pick a point. Pick a point for me. What point do you want? Uh, 10, 10, 640. Okay, so we'll go 10, 640. Okay, so if I'm going to write this in point slope form, lay that out for me. Y what? Minus 640. Good. Y minus 640. Negative 5 halves or negative 2.5. X minus 10. 
okay? Um, now they ask you to put it into slope intercept form. And here's where a decimal is better than the fraction. So if you want to do that, okay, I'm going to write it down here the other way um, and work it out down here. It's not wrong to do it the fraction way. It's just not as easy, okay? Um, but if you want to do the fraction, go for it. So we're going to do what to turn this into slope intercept? Distribute first, right? First step is distribute. So we're going to distribute. Remember, it's a negative 2.5. So y minus 640 equals negative 2.5 times x. And then negative 2.5 times negative 10 is going to be plus a positive, right? So we're going to go plus. What's 2.5 times 10? 20. 25, right? Just move your decimal one place when you multiply by 10. Okay, so right now we're at this point. How do I put that into slope intercept form? Add 640. So you're going to add 640 here, and you're going to add 640 here. So we get y equals negative 2.5x plus 8, oh, not 8, 600. 65. Okay, so this is this, the slope intercept form. Y equals negative 2.5x plus 665. Okay, now this is probably the hard part. What do, the, what do those things mean? What does the slope mean here? What does negative 2.5 mean? What does that mean though? It is the slope. What is the slope telling us? Negative 2.5 what? There's time involved and there's meters involved, okay? So think about it. Slope is the change in y, right? We said this a long time ago. Delta y, change in y over the change in x. So if we think of negative 2.5 as a fraction, it's negative 2.5 over 1. What is our y value representing right now? Altitude, right? It's meters, okay? So this is saying negative 2.5 meters per, the line means per, one what? Second, okay? So what, it, what does it mean? It means we are dropping negative 2.5 meters per second. Do you understand where that's coming from? It's the change in y, it's the change in your meters over the change in your time, your seconds. Okay? So we are dropping 2.5 meters per second because it's negative. Okay? If it was positive, we'd say we're going up 2.5 meters per second. Okay? Um, what does the y-intercept mean? Do you know what this number represents? It is an altitude. The altitude when? Not at 2.5 meters. I don't know, please. Keep going. I want you to think about it. What if my time is zero? If time is zero, my meters are what? 665, okay? If I plug in a zero right here, negative 2.5 times zero is zero plus 65. So when my time is zero, what does that mean? When my time is zero? It's where we started, right? If my time is zero, it's, it's here and now. It's the start of our problem. Um, so what does the y-intercept mean? It means we started our descent. How do you spell descent? S C, decent is D E C. Is it, is there an S? Yeah, probably. Descent. Yeah. I think so. Okay, so we started our descent at 665 meters high. 
Okay, so the y-intercept, whenever they ask you what does the y-intercept mean, it, it pretty much means this is where we started. We started at 665 meters, okay? Any questions on that? No. 